So we want to compare these two different types of utility functions, perfect substitutes and imperfect substitutes. And while we're doing that, we want to pay attention to the really important idea of moving along the indifference planes that, that signify a certain utility level that a consumer has reached, and then thinking about shifting to another indifference plane, which signifies a higher or lower utility level that the consumer reaches. Let's start over here with perfect substitutes, which is kind of an odd way to think about utility because there's no diminishing returns to consuming more X or Y. Every time that a consumer gets another unit of X or Y, utility increases uh, by the amount of the coefficient that's in front of X or Y. Now what we want to do is, is build an indifference curve, and I'm just going to choose a, a, a level of utility that a consumer can reach let's say utility equal 10. And I want to show all the possible combinations of X and Y that allow for this consumer to get to utility equal to 10. Now to do that, because this is a linear function, all I need to do is figure out how much Y the consumer would need uh, to get to utility to 10 if he or she consumed no X, and then vice versa, how much X they'd need if they didn't consume any Y. So let's start here and think about the x-intercept. If, uh, if y equals 0, then I need to solve out uh, utility equal 10. And that's pretty easy to do. I get x equal 5. And then obviously, if the consumer doesn't have any x, they'd need 10 units of y to reach the uh, utility level equal to 10. And because that's a linear function in x and y, I just can connect the dots. And then I can start to imagine, what if I started to take away units of x from this consumer? What would have to happen in order to uh, let them stay at the utility level of 10? In other words, how can they move along that indifference curve uh, that, uh, that shows them at utility equal to 10? Well, let's see here. I started at uh, x equal 5, and I'm going to take away a unit of x. So I'm moving along that indifference curve to this point right here, and I need to figure out how much y this consumer would need in order to stay at utility equal to 10. So from the consumption of x, uh, this consumer gets 8 units of utility if x equals 4, and then I've got to figure out how much y they'd need uh, to maintain that utility level equal to 10, and I get y equal 2. All right, and I could, I, could com I could continue this exercise where I take away a unit of x, and I figure out how much y the consumer would need, and this would be constant because of the linearity of the utility function. Now, the next thing we want to do, all right, we've shown a movement along that indifference plane. Let's show a shift to another indifference plane. In order to do that, I'm going to have to come up with a different level of utility. Let's say utility equal to 12. right? And then I've got to build a whole new different indifference curve. And I just need to figure out a starting point, a good starting point, figure out the x-intercept. I do that algebra there. I get x equals 6. So if this consumer has six units of x, they can get to a uh, utility equal to 12. Similarly, if I give them 12 units of y, they've reached the indifference curve. We re now we're on a new indifference curve that shows a whole different utility level uh, than we had previously. So again, the odd thing about perfect substitutes is that um, there's no, there's no decreasing marginal utility from consuming more and more x. Every time I give this consumer a unit of x, utility changes by the same amount, same with y, and that doesn't really comport with reality. Usually we uh, value more and more goods less and less, and that's why we want to think about the imperfect substitute model uh, where we'll use a Cobb-Douglas, the famous Cobb-Douglas utility function, and think about generating uh, indifference curves with those kind of uh, with this kind of function, so let's use the same utility levels that we did here for perfect substitutes. So 
I'm going to say that utility equals 10. And I want to draw an indifference curve that shows all the different possibilities between x and y that this consumer can have to reach a utility equal to 10. So notice here, uh, if x or y is 0, the consumer doesn't have any utility. So I need to start with either x equal 1 or y equals 1, I think is a good place to start to do this. Let's suppose that uh, y equals 1. So I'm down here on that x plane, on that x, y plane, and I want to figure out how much x this consumer would need to get to utility equal uh, 10. So what I'm going to do is substitute 10 in for the utility level. Substitute 1 in for the uh, amount of y the consumer has and solve out for x and I get 100 units of x. So I'm way over here on the uh, xy plane. So there's, there's a point on this uh, indifference curve that I'm going to draw here for this consumer. Similarly, if they only have one unit of x, right, this is symmetric uh, in x and y, they'd have 100 units of y. So right here I've got two different points um, on, this, uh, on this indifference plane that comports to utility equal 10. And now what I want to do, let's just choose uh, a level of x and y that's equal to each other. So if, uh, if y equals 10, then uh, I can solve out really easily here. If y equals 10, x equals 10, and I've got another point on that indifference plane. So that indifference plane, right, it's never going to intercept with an x or y axis. It's a curve through there that shows all the different possibilities of reaching utility equal to 10. And because we found three points on there, we can imagine moving along that indifference plane compensating for losses of x or y in order to maintain the utility equal uh, to whatever value uh, is consistent with that indifference plane. Now the last thing I want to do here is think about reaching a utility equal uh, 12 like we did with the perfect substitute model. So what I'm going to do is shift to a different indifference plane. Um, if y equals 1, then x is going to have to equal 144. So now I'm way out here on the uh, indifference curve, this new indifference curve I've, I've found. Um, similarly, I'd be way up here right, with one unit, of, one unit of x and 144 units of y. And if, um, If I give this consumer 12 units of x, then y is going to have to equal 12 as well. So I found a different point on the, uh, that second indifference curve, and I can connect those dots, right, curve through there, and I've got a new indifference curve that I've moved to from the earlier one where utility was just equal to uh, 10. So once again, we've, we've shown the difference between these two different kinds of uh, utility functions. Perfect substitutes, linear in x and y, um, but, and then with imperfect substitutes, there's this curvilinear structure uh, that we see here. Because of uh, diminishing marginal utility, we're going to get that curvilinear structure there. And, um, but with both of them, we've shown how movements can occur along in a difference plane and how we can shift to a higher indifference plane that uh, shows a, a larger amount of utility from consuming X and Y.